Wow, 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 wow. Manchester United drawing with Burnley. A Burnley side who have lost at home to Huddersfield this season, who have lost at home to Brighton this season. A team who are currently rock bottom of the Premier League. Manchester United won, Burnley won. Two games in a row against teams that we should have been sweeping aside with ease. And two games where Manchester United have completely thrown it away. That game there today, wow. Oh, Jesus. It's another game where Manchester United seems so totally dominant and so in control of the game. But another game where Manchester United are unable to get that second goal, to kill the game. And of course, it was um, uh, two goals ruled out, right? First one, I thought it was unfair. I thought it was a harsh decision. Maguire gets pushed into an offside position. Is he? Do what you want with that one. But the second one, outrageous. There's no way that should be a foul called on Paul Pogba. It, it should have been three. It could have been three nil. It should have been two nil in that first half. Game set and match. Jaden Sancho playing brilliantly. Manchester United playing with fluid, fluidity, attacking football. Shaw and Rashford down the left, linking up great for the goal. Pogba, wonderful finish. There's so many good talking points from that first 45 and the second 45. Pure, pure Jekyll and Hyde. Pure Jekyll and Hyde from this United team. I don't know where you want to point the finger at. I'll tell you who I will point the goddamn finger at. You can see it. In it. I am so done with Harry Maguire. I am so done with Harry Maguire. Rafael Varane's arrival at Manchester United has shown United fans what a centre-back should look like. How comfortable and easy a good centre-back makes football look. Harry Maguire makes everything look difficult. Harry Maguire was running through treacle for the Burnley equaliser. Overcommitted, lunged into a tackle, couldn't make it back. They scored. Jay Rodriguez. They caused tonight an absolute... It was, like the, it was like the mountain from Game of Thrones. Just elbowing everybody, throwing. That's how Burnley are going to play. And that's what Burnley do. Let's not be too surprised at that. And let's not be too surprised that two games in a row, Manchester United against Middlesbrough at home in the FA Cup. And there today against Burnley, bottom rock, bottom of the league. I want to throw in the people's elbow after that one. My word. There's nothing that there's nothing you can say. There's no, there's there's no real surprise from that. Given it happened literally three days ago, there's no real. I mean, of course, there's anger, but it's just like, you, yeah, that, that's that it. That's that's what United are at the moment. United are a team that can blow you away for 45 minutes. Brentford second half, whole game against West Ham, total control. Majority of the game against Middlesbrough before we collapsed. And there today, again, we did the exact same thing. We collapsed against that Burnley team. First half, utter, utter domination. And it, the longer the game went on, Cavani should have scored there. Cavani massively ineffective there when, for, for Cristiano Ronaldo, who didn't start the game. But Cristiano Ronaldo missing two headers, both off target. That one from Ilanga there. Wonderful whip cross from him. But it's uh, what's your reaction to this? It, uh, I don't know where to take a step forward and where to be angry with because I want to be speaking about Jaden Sancho. I want to be waxing lyrical about how well he played in that game. Look at him, man. He looked like, looked like, it looks like he's arriving. He was even getting angry towards the end, saying, why are you not running forward? Running at defenders with the ball, getting double nutmegs. Great play from Jaden Sancho tonight, but you can't really talk about it. You can't really talk about Paul Popper's excellent finish and how well Paul Popper played in those first 45 minutes. Because it's just all superseded. It's just all irrelevant when you look at what happened in the second half. And I don't know where you point the finger at here. Is this a mental attitude thing? Is this is this a block from the from the United players? Because as soon as Burnley came out in that second half, they were a yard closer to every single second ball. Every second ball in that second half. Complete and utter polar opposite to the first half. Where we played totally as a team. Diogo Delo making two clear-cut chances from winning the ball back high up the pitch. I thought we played great in the first half. Well, everyone played great in the first half. Luke Shaw, Matt, Raphael Varane looked like Champions League. Varane, great header. So unfortunate that was ruled out. Really, really unfortunate that was ruled out. But it was just another game there today where it's followed on and the patterns that you saw from Middlesbrough repeated themselves. And that's when things start to become a worry. All right? You can always get isolated, in, isolated incidents in football in life. It happens. You get anomalies. You don't get two anomalies in a row. That's when it's not an anomaly anymore, and it's a pattern. Two games in a row against opposition that United should be sweeping aside. We've been 1-0 up, going into halftime, and we've come out in the second half, and we've just we've put it in third gear. We're cruising. 
instead of being first it's like is it an energy thing are we running at, is the fitness not there is it is it a mental thing is it a tactical thing are we being told to not be aggressive for that second ball in this i very much doubt that that's ralph radnick's style of football but jeez man what are you doing it's burnley at home top four man absolutely you can kiss it goodbye if this is i mean look spurs have still got two games in hand on us we're chasing the top four all season long right the best we can hope for really is us to have a miracle in the Champions League because I think we're we're chasing the coattails of top four. If you're going to go and drop points against Burnley, a bottom of the Premier League Burnley, I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet, bottom of the Premier League Burnley, then you don't deserve to get top four finish. That's what I would say about that. Speaking about anybody else, I, I don't, look, I, I could talk about how I felt I was impressed by McTominay in that number six role before he was taken off. I could talk about how I thought Bruno Fernandes and Paul Popper when in possession, United looked very good going forward. But you just can't talk about it. There's no point focusing on that because it's irrelevant when the overarching theme of that game is United have gone and done it again. In that second half, United have just let the team back in. Where's our killer instinct? We're puppies. We can't get that goal that kills the game. And of course, look, we have every right to feel frustrated and hard done by about the handball against Middlesbrough, about... Uh, the fact that I look, I can un I can semi understand why the Varane header was ruled out. I felt it was unfair because Maguire was pushed in the first place, but you know it is what it is. Second one, those outrageous. It wasn't a foul, man. Those sorts of they they happen twenty four seven in a game, and you're stopping at Burnley. Just well, that's Burnley's game. Veghorst was an absolute. It was a disgusting. It's so many tackles, it's so many lunges he was going in for tonight. Didn't see much of that from Mike Dean. But it's just a game where United have let it slip again. We've bottled it again. And as I said, I don't. it's not really typically my style to scapegoat. But I'm, I feel like I'm done with Harry Maguire. We paid like nearly three times as much for him than we did Rafael Varane. And Rafael Varane is three times the player. When you, when you watch a player like Varane, you, the, the, the levels of... The centre-back levels have been set now at Manchester United. And it's not been set by our captain, Harry Maguire, who's been here for a couple of years. Lindelof, to be fair, has been playing okay this season. But Varane and Lindelof is by far and away United's best choice centre-back partnership tonight. Had, Mo had Maguire not been on the pitch here tonight, well, he contributed to both a goal for Burnley and contributed to a goal getting ruled out. Maybe it would have been a completely and utterly different result if, if Maguire didn't play. I won't speak in those hypotheticals, but just the levels of his performances and the consistency of how crap they are. I feel like I'm done with it. And this is, a, this is a, it's supposed to be a captain of United, man. Not just any player, the captain of our club putting in those sorts of performances. It's just unforgivable. I can't really talk about anything else in that game. I'll be honest. It's just, I mean, De Gea made a cracking save to keep us in it. But where, where, why? Why, where, how, when? You need to let me know this in the comments because how, how, how are United coming out in that second half so utterly different? Is it because Burnley are coming out more pumped up for it? Of course they are. But you can expect that from Burnley. You can expect that from any team who goes in 1-0 down at half time. That is how football works, ladies and gentlemen. But for United to second time in a row, just to let the other team just get back into it. I don't get it. I don't understand where it's coming from. It's not a tactical thing from Ralph Radnick to say, look, we're 1-0 up. Let's sit back. Let's try and soak it up and hit on the counter-attack. It's not weird. It's not what we do well in this in this four three three with with Scott McTominay as a number six and Bruno and Popper as two number eights. You can talk if you want about um, the substitutions there. Lingard being brought on was it for McTominay and then Alanga coming on for Rashford and you can say ah oh, Radnick he was part of the problem there because he dropped Popper a bit too deep and he took us away from the game. I was, right, cool, yeah, but he was putting on as many tackles as possible. So there's six of one and half a dozen of the other there. That, I don't really think that's kind of the point here. The point here is that. Those 11 players on the pitch, two games in a row against Middlesbrough Championship team and rock bottom of the Premier League, Burnley, have thrown away a 1-0 lead in the game where we just totally dominated for 45 minutes. 40, yeah, 45 minutes tonight, 60 minutes against Middlesbrough in the games where we should have been cruising by halftime. 2-3, 4-0 in both games. In both games, we went in 1-0 at halftime. In both games, they ended 1-0. Luckily, there was no penalties tonight because I'm sure we would have lost those 9-8 as well. What's your overall frustration and your thoughts about that game? Uh, I need I, I need you to point out to put it in the comments. Point out exactly to me how and why this is continuing to happen. Is it coming from the players? Is it coming from the manager? Is it coming from an overall mentality that's still inside this football club? Because we are bottling it. We bottled it two games in a row there in games we should have won, and it shouldn't have really have been a conversation. But instead, 
It's exactly what we're talking about. You need to let me know what you think in the comments, man, because the frustration's just insane watching United. It really is. 